Genesis 37, verse 1. Again, finish it up, my God, in between. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. Verse 2 of Genesis 37, 2. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flock. He worked mm, for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wife, Bilhi and Zilpi. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. We would have called him a telltale in my day. <laughs> Jacob loved Joseph more, though, than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe, very symbolic, don't have time, but it's symbolic. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more. Some of you right now is in bitterness because your siblings hated you because you got the new bike and they didn't. I'm being serious. Apply the scripture to your present circumstances and the things you're dealing with in the soulish man, which is your mind, will, and emotion. But his brothers hated him, hated Joseph because of their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. Verse 5 says, one night Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more than ever. He said, listen to this dream. He said, we were out in the fields tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine, prophesying. God was letting Joseph know what is to come, but he didn't tell him everything he had to endure before he got there. Come on, somebody. His brother responded, prophesying, so you think, not even realizing, so you think you will be our king? <laughs> Do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams. Be careful who you share stuff with. There's a time and a place for everything. Amen. Everybody can't handle your purpose. Everybody can't handle your revelation. Everybody can't handle you. Verse 9, soon Joseph had another dream. So he had a set of two. How can two walk together except there be a agreement? Will any two touch and agree? It's something about the number two. So last time I checked, you can't do this by yourself. All that talking about God know my heart and me and God got my own thing and I don't need the church. I don't need nobody. Well, that ain't Bible. That's flesh. So Joseph had another dream and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream. He said, the sun, moon, and 11 stars bow low. Symbolic of the 12. Before me. This time he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers. But his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father, wisdom, y'all, wondered what the dream meant. So, Father, thank you. Empower me, Lord, by your spirit. Give me fresh fire from heaven. Give me strength, Father God, to do what I cannot do within my own strength. Lord, it's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by your spirit, Lord. Touch the people of God. Father God, you have sent mm, a great Augustine of believers gathered here at 205 South Sheridan and even online. So, Father God, speak truth. Speak with substance. Speak with accuracy. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. We say yes. Shift our minds. Heal our souls. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I've been trying to get through with the in-between series, uh, God has allowed some pit stops along the way. But we know that God gave Joseph a dream. And we know, my God, for those that read their word, that Joseph ended up where he was supposed to end up. But he had a lot of trials and tribulations that he had to go through to get there. But I like in the story of Joseph, it mirrors to my own personal life. Uh, but how many know, my God, some of you need to know that some of the things that you are experiencing is part of the process of molding, shaping, and preparing you for that what God has called you to do. 
Even though God has given you a dream, God has shown some of you your purpose, but now God has to prepare you to be able to handle that what he has equipped and called you to do. Are you listening to me so far? And so God knows when to reveal, when to expose, and when to show us things, because it's called stages. If God would have showed, y'all heard me say, me and my wife, everything we would have had to encounter six years ago when we birthed going off of Christ Church, my God, though I have the calling to pastor the church, my God, I don't know if I would have accepted it if I would have had to go through the level of pain and disappointment, my God, dealing with people that profess to be Christians and operate in integrity and loyalty. Ah, some of your greatest pain come from the people, my God, sitting right beside you. That's just the way it is. Life ain't always fair. But God gave Joseph a dream, and God did not tell Joseph all the things that he was going to have to go through. But the Bible says throughout the Genesis 37 on to the end, or all the way up to 50, the Bible constantly said that the Lord was with Joseph. Look at your name and say, the Lord was with you. This is what you and I have to accept into our mindset that no matter what you're facing right now, if you yield and submit, my God, to what God is trying to do, my God, the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. Every step of the way, the Lord was with Joseph. From the pit to prison to palace, the Bible kept reiterating that the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph, my God. God gave Joseph favor all the way to the palace, and then when he got to the palace, he continually gave him favor. I need you to understand something, my God. I need you to shift your mind before we get into the message about the things that you are facing right now. Because uh, you have asked God to do some things in your life. You have prayed and asked God to reveal. You have prayed and asked God to sanctify. You have prayed and asked God to mature you and to develop you. You have prayed and asked God to get you prepared for your purpose and your calling in life. And God is trying to do just what you asked him to do. But you and I, I and you don't like the way he's doing it. And so, my God, when, we, when it has to do with pain, if it has to do with, 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 with disruption, if it has to do with any setbacks, my God, oh, my God, then we don't think that it's God. Because we always associate, we as a people, we tend to, let me say it like this, we tend to always associate good things with God. Uh, but the word of God says every good and perfect gift come from above. As I taught y'all, my God, for those that have been sitting up under me for any length of time, I'm going to say that again. The book of James said every good and perfect gift come from God. God, why come trials can't be a perfect gift? Why come hardships can't be a perfect gift? How come that setback can't be a perfect gift? How come you, how come you not getting the promotion? Uh, why, how you know that wasn't a perfect gift? Come on, somebody. Uh, there's doors that God closed, my God. You, you, you don't know that was going to lead you into bondage, uh, lead you into chaos, my God. Every good and perfect gift come from above. That's why it's so important for you and I to stay lined up. That's why it's so important for you and I to keep our will as we learned in discipleship class. By the way, my God, I want to thank each and every one of you. We had a total, Pastor Chef told me, of 76 people in discipleship class. 76 people in one class. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. 76 people, my God, that's tired of doing church, that want to, my God, go to another level in their lives. I give God 76 people. Pastor said, my God. I said, that's a, who, mm, let me be cold. Mm. Many of them wish they, mm, yes, Lord, I give. Come on, one more time, give God a hand. So, my God, on your way to fulfilling what God has called you to do, uh, this topic that I'm going to finish and talk about, my God, is critical. As I talked about this past Wednesday, last two weeks, about uh, 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 don't take the bait from Satan of offense. This one right here, my God, uh, has disqualified many and will continue to disqualify you if you don't bring your attitude and submission to your spirit. And so the title of the sermon is, my God, who, my God, watch your attitude. It's simple, but it's profound when you get into it. Attitude is a subtle way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. Some of you have formed and settled in your mind the wrong perception about people, about things. Oh, my God, some of the things you have, are going through and experienced, my God, past, present, or even in the future, you have settled your mind that this cannot be God. And you won't even, you're not even open to the Spirit of God showing you and telling you, it is me. 
what you may be going through, it is of God. But again, it's a settled way of thinking or feeling about something or someone. Typically, one that is reflected in a person's behavior. A person's behavior will always tell you about the attitude. As we say, you can, see a, uh, you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bear. My God. Ooh, my God. Mm, thank you, Lord. And so our behavior uh, correlates with our attitude. Mm. And so if we are spotty, inconsistent, up and down in our behavior, that's because as a man thinking, so he is. Are y'all with me so far? And so I've talked about point number one to how uh, uh, from two weeks ago, how you and I got to develop an attractive attitude. Your attitude should attract the things of God. It should attract the people of God to you. It should attract resources in discipleship one that we have here going on for Christ. Uh, my God, the great Ron McIntosh, Bishop McIntosh brother, talks about the law of attraction. My God, who you can attract into your life, your most dominant thought. So, my God, if your thoughts, my God, is not on the kingdom, if your thoughts is not about the things of God and your thoughts is more of the world, guess what you're going to attract? The world. You have two systems. You have God's system and you have the world system. And whatever one you focus on the longest, that is the one that you attract. Oh, that's why we have so many frustrated Christians. That's why we have so many defeated Christians, my God, because their mind is only on the kingdom in the short time that they're in church. And if you got a church and they rushing you through like cattle and you don't eat in an hour, you sure ain't thinking about God. You think about where you're going to eat and how to get out of there. Come on, somebody. So, God, think about that. Think about the attitude. I'm still with it. It's only two, kingdom and the world. Which one do you find yourself thinking about and meditating on the most? What do you find yourself in the course of 24 hours? I understand we got to work. I understand you got to be a wife. I understand you got to be kid, uh, 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 deal with the kids. I understand you got to be, my God, a grandma and all that. You got to deal with all these mini hats that men and women have to wear. But sooner or later, you got to begin to come off the battlefield called life and make sure you spend some time with God getting your mind on the kingdom so you can attract the kingdom into your life. One of the greatest weapons, the Bible, I mean, that my spiritual father told me that I'm going to have to watch because I'm very passionate. And I just learned, my God, that my object of passion, who my God is, is Christ. Lanny taught me that this morning. My object of my passion is because I love Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, my God, I posted that. My object, let me say that again, of my passion, my God, is because I love Jesus. Now, that what Minister Lanny taught us is good. My God, good because it's focused in the right thing. Come on, somebody. It's I'm passionate about the right person. Come on, somebody. If I was passionate about gangs like I used to be, passionate about drugs stuff like I used to be, that's the wrong passion. My passion now, my God, the same passion I had when I was in the world, my God, God just redirected it. Now, Sharon, I'm passionate for God. That's a good object to be passionate about. So now you understand me. If you're going to criticize me because I'm passionate about God, then so be it. What are you passionate about? I was once passionate about something that was killing me. Now I'm passionate about someone that's giving me life. You going to crucify me because of that? Well, go on crucify me because I'm going on with God. Somebody give God a hand. And so you and I, you and I, you and I got to develop, my God, an attractive attitude. Uh, don't nobody really want to be around no person with always a nasty attitude. I know you can't say nothing to her because she shouldn't. <laughs> so in order to watch our attitude, you and I got to begin to develop. My God, there are some attitudes we need to develop. And how do we develop an attitude that's attractive? Don't allow, as I told you, and I'm not going to mess with number point one. Just go look it on YouTube. But I want to give you this. Don't allow where you are to make you look like where you are. Everybody's dealing with something. But don't worry. And don't show it. See what I'm trying to say? The Bible says, and oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but David, I mean, Daniel distinguished himself. Uh, he had an extraordinary spirit. He didn't let his situations, my God, show in his character. He didn't let it show in his words. He didn't let it show in his attitude. And I told y'all, my God, that in Numbers 11, 4 and 6, I'm just catching you up, that then the former, a foreign rabbi who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. Egypt represents the, the world in our time, but it represented captivity, my God, back then. And I told y'all, my God, whew, thank you, Lord, that you got to be willing to pay the price. You got to be willing to pay the price, my God, to move forward in that what God has called you to. We must learn to always be thankful to God. We're on, we are not thanking him for, a, for the trial. We're thanking him for equipping us for the trial. Again, to bring context to the scripture, Joseph had a dream. 
And so, my God, there's some processes, there's some pit stops, and some situations along the way, my God, to Joseph fulfilling the dream that God put in him. God gave him the dream. God gave you your dream. God gave him the purpose. God gave you your purpose, my God. But what God has not did is begin to show you and I everything that you and I have to go through in order to fulfill that dream. Come on, are y'all with me so far? And so, my God, you got to get to the point where you're able to thank God for whatever you're going through, whatever season you're in. Because that season of tightness, that season of toughness, my God, is preparation to fulfilling your purpose. God is trying to get you and I, I and you ready, my God, for that, what he's preparing us, equipping us for. Are y'all with me so far? Your attitude would either make you happy or your attitude would make you miserable. Are y'all with me so far? We must disown, my God, the spirit of helplessness. I want to talk to you about something. Many people, my God, plays the victim. They have a victim attitude. My God, a victim attitude has little choice but to whine and wait until something good happens. Being around someone who chooses to play the victim is draining. Poor me. Quote scripture, but it's poor me. Faithful to church, but poor me. Things just happen to you, things just happen to everybody. But it's dangerous when you and I begin to take on the mindset of the victim. I'm not going to discredit. I'm not going to disqualify. I'm going to be very sensitive as a pastor, my God, concerning the things that has happened to you, my God. But sooner or later, you got the purpose in your mind huh, that no matter what has happened, my God, I'm going to make my mind up and I'm going to make something out of my life. I'm not going to continue to walk around, my God, playing the victim role. As long as you continue to play the victim role, it's going to always be somebody's fault. You're going to always live in defeat. You're going to always blame somebody. You're not going to never take the bull about a horn because you have a victim mentality. That is a dangerous, dangerous place to be in. And many of you today, up under the sound of my voice, in some capacity, plays the victim role. And when somebody, my God, that God has brought out of horrible pits, my God, like Joseph was in, and they walk, my God, with a, a high statue, they, hawk, they walk with a, with a great de degree of effectiveness, people that has a victim mentality, they don't want to be around nobody that's sure of themselves. My God, people, my God, with a victim mentality, baby, my God, can't stand to be someone that, around someone that walk in confidence. The people with a victim mentality will say, she's arrogant. She thinks she all that. My God, they'll find a reason to criticize because they need to get away from you, my God. Because they, because mm, my God, you walk with too much confidence and you make them uncomfortable, my God. So you got to ask yourself, my God, do I have an attitude, my God, right now under the sound of pastor's voice of a victim? Yes, it happened, but you don't have to be a victim. Yeah, they said it, but you don't have to be a victim. Many of us cannot possess the land. Many of us cannot move forward because we operate, keyword operate, is something that I do on a consistent basis. We operate with a victim mentality. That's why we can't heal. That's why we get easily offended. That's why we walk around in unforgiveness, my God, because we're not emotionally healthy because we see ourselves as a victim. Everybody owe you something. The state owe you something. Your ex-husband owe you something. Your baby's mom and baby daddy owe you something. Everybody owe you. You got a victim mentality. And that's why you don't walk around like a king and a queen that you are because you subject, subject yourself to a victim mentality. Somebody give God a hand. I know that cut some of y'all. Yeah, that cut some of y'all. I'm looking at you. So if you got a, a victim attitude, my God, who, my, that's a dangerous place to be in. It's hard for the spirit of God to penetrate that type of mindset because you have low self-esteem. You have a poor image of yourself. You don't believe what the Constitution say about you. You'll quote, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You'll quote that, but you don't believe that because you don't show it in your behavior. See, everybody don't owe you nothing. Don't nobody owe you nothing but love. Society don't owe you nothing. I thank God that when I went to, when I got incarcerated, I didn't come out thinking talking about the white man owed me this and the white man. The devil is alive. I never got caught up in all that mess. Victim, victim, Holy Ghost, help me. Victim, victim. Yes, you was violated. Yes, they touched you. Yes, they dropped you. Yes, they said he was going to come. Yes, daddy said he was coming, never came. Don't stay a victim. I can think of a thousand reasons, my God. My mama had seven kids, five boys and two girls. I can think of a thousand reasons to play the victim role, my God, But because I didn't have everything. The devil is alive. My mama and grandma did the best they could. And I'm, my God, I'm a grown man. I've been a, I got the man up, baby. Quit blaming everybody for your condition. Quit blaming your mamas and daddies and grandmas for your condition. Man up, you're a grown woman. I set before you life and death. Blessing and curses, choose life. 
That's why we can't get ahead because we're playing the victim role. If, some, if one door closed, we, we, we feel victimized. If somebody, my God, don't affirm us, somebody don't say something to us, we feel victimized. If one opportunity don't open, we feel better. The world is against me. Don't nobody love me. Everybody's always talking about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. I know God is talking to somebody. Come on, somebody give God a hand. Being around, as I stated, someone who chooses to play the victim is very draining. Here she come. You trying to make an exit to go somewhere else. Here he come. I always get playing. See, let me help you. Let me help the men now. Let me liberate the men. If you're here today and you think somebody owe you something, that 40 acres and a mule, that's over, baby. Wash that out of your mind, baby, because that's not happening. Talking about the white man, this, and you got just as much opportunity as a black man, white man, yellow man, green man, orange man. I don't want to hear it. Get away from me with all that racism and prejudice. Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. All that old victim mentality, especially in African American culture, it's bad. If I'd have looked like that, my God, Eddie Miller wouldn't have helped me. Bishop McIntosh, I wouldn't have submitted to him. And all of the Caucasian people that God has used in these to help me get to where I'm at, the devil is alive. Listening to what the people want, my God. Don't be around that white man. Why you go to that white man's church? I had many people tell me, why you sitting up under that white man? Why you go to that church of that white man? He's stealing everybody's members from out north at the time when it was Greenwood before it was transformation. I had to go through all this stuff. George, the devil is alive. I thank God that I know who I was. I thank God that my grandma raised her. Oh, my God, I had a son foundation. She didn't tolerate that old racism. She didn't have time for that right there. I thank God I didn't miss God. Listen to the people that function in the world. I'm a kingdom man. I don't function by the world, baby. That's why I can't be understood because you finally try to follow me from the flesh. I'm glad I didn't listen to that stuff, champ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Somebody appreciate their pastor's liberation. Yeah, that's somebody need to hear that because you're dealing with that. All this old Israelite, with all this stuff. Y'all hear all the stuff that's going on, uh, the Israelite this, and all. I don't want to hear none of that. All I know is that what I couldn't do in my flesh, when I accepted Christ 24 years ago, I've been set free and delivered. That's all I know, and I don't want to know nothing else. I ain't open to know nothing else. You can email, you can call me. All you're going to get is Christ crucified, buried, and resurrected. If you ain't talking about that, you ain't, I ain't got nothing for you. The Bible says stay away from all that. I ain't open to, I am not open to nothing else. I don't want to know nothing else but Christ. Call me. You can say I'm closed minded. You can say I'm small minded. I don't care. It's Christ on mine. That's why the church is called going hard for Christ. I don't want to hear it. I'm confident in who I am. I know in who I believe. Paul said I'm persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I know some of you don't like it because you're entertaining everything, but it's Christ on mine. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Yep, I said it. Joe did. It's all online, too. It's Christ on mine. Look at your neighbor and say, it's Christ on mine. Hallelujah. Dominique, come turn this arrow up in here, man of God. I feel the fire of God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Your attitude, watch this. Your attitude, your attitude. I had to say that, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I had to say that. Because, see, I have to be transparent and I have to be vulnerable. I have to be willing to be, I have to be, willing to be misunderstood. As a pastor, as a teacher, as a leader, you have to be transparent. And there's people sitting here and looking online that need to hear that. Because I get a lot of people calling me about this Ishmaelite stuff. I mean, this Israelite stuff and black people, this and I don't want to hear none of it. Paul tells me to stay away. I'm not even open to it. I don't want to talk about it. If you don't like it, don't show up at 205 South Shirley. I'm not finna be persuaded. Yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, you got to close your ears. You got to close your ears to all that negative stuff. All that stuff the enemy trying to use to, to, to disconnect you from Christ. Some of you started out well loving God. Some of you started out running hard for God. The Bible says, Paul said, who has betwixt you? Who has interfered? My God, you was once running a good race. What has happened? You started out running hard for God. What have you started listening to? What have you started believing? He told Timothy, stay true to what you first believed. Go back to your first love and stay down with Christ. Quit letting everybody sway you and make you begin to question, is Jesus this and is Jesus that? Is Christianity that the devil is alive? Is Christ on mine? That ain't for me, that's for you. Because some of you entertain a whole lot of stuff, that's why you're confused. That's why you're confused. You're attracting all this other different religion and all this mess and you're confused. Your foundation ain't even strong enough to handle what you got now. You already entertain other stuff. 
Yeah, we preach truth at 205 South Sheridan. And so your attitude will either uh, help, your attitude, my God, would either make you some friends or your attitude will make you have enemies. Your attitude would either attract friends or make you have enemies. Why is it that you can start off, my God, in unity with someone, all of a sudden you become enemies? You're ready to cut each other's throat. Somebody's attitude and get out of whack. Started out in purity, my God, now something that's unholy has got into it. Mm. Attitude. Would attract friends, help you make friends, that would cause you to have enemies. David said, my God, if this would have happened to me by some, somebody else, but my closest companion, who I once broke bread with, has come against me. He said, I can do this if somebody's sitting on the back row, but it's the closest ones to me. David said, it's a cold battle I'm in right here. Yeah, yeah. As we talked long last Wednesday, the, the greatest pain comes from those that's closest to you. Are y'all with me so far? There is no greater expression of faith than to lift your hands and thank God for something you can't even see right now. See, this is where, my God, this is where Minister Lanny taught us, my God, where you got it. And I knew it, but I'm going to bring some clarity to it. This is where you and I got to get to the point, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter how many, how many how, what type of, the, what the doctor said, no matter what bad report you got, no matter what, if your heart is set on God and your desire is to please God, and you are in love with God. Yeah. That means no matter what you ever, it may, uh, it may, uh, uh, you may took some daggers, you, uh, uh. oh, come on, you, uh, but notice I ain't moved no more. I'm taking them. I'm adjusting, I'm adapting, but at the end of all that, my God, when you love God in the midst of everything you're going through, through the hell, my God, you will stand, my God, and give God some glory. That's the greatest expression of faith. My God, in the midst of what you're going through, you can still stand and give God some glory. No matter if the marriage falling apart, the key is locked up. My God, my God, sickness in the body. My God, when you don't understand what's going on, my God, if you can stand, my God, somebody should have caught that in the spirit. If you can stand and still give God some glory, no matter of what you're going through, that's the greatest expression of faith. Can you praise them when it don't feel good? Can you praise them when it don't sound good? Can you praise them when all heaven, my God, feel like it's against you? Can you still give God some glory in the midst of everything you're going through? Can Is he still Lord? When the heavens is closed, is he still Lord? When stuff ain't going your way, is he still Lord? Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, when all hell done broke loose, is he still Lord? When the woman that broke your heart, my God, is he still Lord? When the man that broke your heart, he still love. When they had a baby by another woman, is he still Lord? Who am I talking to in the church, my God? You can't just praise him when it's good. Can you praise him when it's bad? Hey, he cheated on you. Oh, he's still Lord. I didn't get the job, but he's still Lord. Oh, my God, they counted me out. He counted me in, and he's still Lord. Oh, they thought I wasn't going to come back, baby. Cold, but we bounced back. He's still Lord, who am I talking to? Is anybody got any faith in the church? Come on and stand. Come on and stand and worship God. Joseph never got a negative attitude in the midst of the trial. As I just stated, the greatest, my God. Ooh, oh my God, you can show your true faith, your true love. In the midst of what you're going through, you still faithful. You still showing up. You still worshiping God. Oh, you about to lose your mind, but you still worshiping God. They got the, the, the light bill may be cut off, but you still worshiping God. You're going home to no running water, but you're going to worship him anyhow. Hey, come on, somebody. Mm. That's an attitude. That's an attitude. And that type of attitude, it has to be developed in someone that's in love with Jesus. See, see, if you got a church attitude... Uh, you got a church mindset, because mindset and attitude kiss one another. If you got a church mindset, my God, your worship, your adoration for God is conditional. It's only when everything is lined up. It's only when people are treating you right. It's only when the pastors are doing this and that for you. It's only when he loving you or she loving you. It's only when you get promotion. Everything is conditional. But when you're falling in love with Jesus, when you ain't got no plan B, when you done, you done seen God move, <laughs> when you know what nobody but God see, it gives you a different level of love. 
It gives you a different level of commitment. You don't have conditional loyalty. You don't have conditional praise. You don't have conditional worship, my God. People that's in love with God, they'll worship in the midst of all kind of hell, all kind of storms, all kind of trial, my God. Hey, can you worship him when the devil is struck? Can you worship him when the storm is struck, my God? Somebody give God a hand. Watch your attitude about what you're going through because everything you're going through ain't the devil, it's God. A lot of stuff you're going through is God. Even Let me help you, let me help you. And I'm careful, thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of the stuff you have been through, you can't see how it was God. Well, that's what the Bible says, my God, what the enemy did, God will turn it around. See, quit quoting stuff and you don't have real revelation from it. You can't just quote, all things work together for the good when everything going good. Why come you can't say that when everything going hell? Foundational teacher. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there's no great expression. My God, when your faith is on trial, as Minister Lanny teaches, my God, faith ain't faith until it's tested faith. The Bible says in James 1, 2, and 3, it says, Message Bible, my God, Minister Lanny call it in your face Bible. Consider a sure gift. Friends, Message Bible, James chapter 1, 2, and 3. Consider it a sure gift. Consider, watch me, it a sure gift, friends, when test. Consider, test, as a, as a gift, and challenges come you, at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open, and it shows its true colors. Some of y'all, God got to allow you because the environment that you're in, he picked you to go through because the people that's in the environment need to see somebody that can stand. That's why Daniel was picked. That's why Joseph was picked. See, what you see it as the enemy, it ain't nothing but a blessing of the Lord. Because somebody needs your faith. Somebody needs your strength. Somebody needs your yes down in your soul, my God. Somebody needs your faith, my God. That's why you got to be able to worship God in the midst of what you're going through. Because to give other people strength. Some of the trials and tribulations you're going through ain't about you. It's about the people that's watching you. Yeah, yeah. You thought it was the devil. Now it's God. Yeah, yeah, it's God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to force your faith into the open because somebody needs it. It's a whole lot of atheists around you. It's a whole lot of people that are ah, this shipwreck. It's a whole lot of people that gave up on Christianity because the pastors and leaders misrepresent the pulpit. My God, there's so many people around the country, my God, has given up, my God, and has sat down on God because the people in the church has misrepresented. So God said, okay, Sharon, okay, Michelle, y'all got to go through because I need y'all testimony. I need y'all faith, my God, because these women around here need to know that no matter what the hell you come out of, you can stand. And after you've done all to stand, you can continue to stand, my God. Oh, my God, with the helmet of salvation on. Some of y'all, y'all faith is on trial because somebody needs your faith. Quit, mm, quit shrieking in the midst of the storm and stand up tall like a real woman and a real man of God. Somebody give God a hand. It's an attitude. It's an attitude. If you got a weak mind, you won't stand like that. If you got a weak mind, you'll quit in the midst of attack. You'll quit in the midst of a storm. You'll complain in the midst of the storm. But, ah, but when you got the mind of Christ in you, my God, you'll stand and say, God, though you save me yet, will I trust in you? Mm. It's an attitude. But you get that attitude, will, my God, because you fall in love with Jesus. If you ain't in love with Jesus, my God, this stuff make you mad. If you play in church and you used to go to church, this type of preaching will make you mad. Oh, but when you love God, baby Cole, hey! hey. Mm. Yes, Lord. I told y'all Jesus was my object of passion. Now I don't longer feel no shame, my God. That's Christ on mine. Mm. Consider, let's look at this word consider. I'm making good time. Is God helping anybody so far? Consider. Consider is an action that we must take. When your trial, when your faith is on trial, that, that's action that you got to take. Don't worry about her. Y'all need to look right her. Because she know, I know what she got going on. She was trying to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Consider. Action word. So your faith is being tested. What type of action you going to put on your faith? 
what type of behavior are you going to display? Because you're being tested, are you going to complain? Are you going to mumble? Are you going to tell lies? Are you going to get offended? Are you going to leave the church? Are you going to say Christianity don't work? My God, what type of attitude will you display? My God, what type of action will you consider? My God, in the midst of what you're going through. Will you believe God in spite of? Yeah. Will you stay down for God in spite of? Are you like Paul? He said, I'm persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Or would you fall over to the Psalm 119 when the psalmist said, it's good for me that I was afflicted. My God, what type of attitude, what type of action is you going to take in the midst of what you're going through, Trees? Oh, my God. Are you going to stand for God? Are you going to get bitter? Are you going to get better? Are you going to run off? My God. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you going to make a permanent decision off a temporary situation? Who am I talking to in the church? I said, are you going make a permanent decision off a temporary trial, temporary persecution, temporary hardship. I'm glad you stayed down, Kiki. I'm glad you didn't give up on this form of gangster, baby. Oh, now you're reaping the benefits. We live like true king and true king now. We have outlast the storm. Is it anybody in this church, my God, that's willing to outlast the storm tonight? Oh, don't let the storm get you. Stay down in the midst of the storm. Hey, they said we weren't going to make it, Kiki, but look at us six years later. Somebody need to stay down in the storm, baby. Do you got faith that our last is storm? When you consider the stuff you're going through and stay down for God. Too many people are quitting on Christ. Are y'all with me so far? Yes, Lord. Consider. Consider what you're going through and then reflect on it. Let's break this down. Consider and then reflect. All this requires action on your behalf. God ain't going to do everything for you. Some blessings is conditional. Other blessings, my God, is uh -huh, unconditional. Some things you and I got to do. There are certain things that automatically come to you and I because we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And then the Bible says, my God, who that you and I, oh my God, discipleship one, you and I got to work out our mind, will, and emotions. You get saved, your spirit's alive. Ain't, the devil can't touch your spirit. Guess what the devil's beating you and I up there in our soul? So you got to work that out, baby. You got to get healed in your soul. And so the trials, the tribulations, the testings, all that, my God. God is trying to work out a wheel in the middle of a wheel, baby. He's trying to get you ready for where he's taking you, my God. You got purpose in you. You got destiny in you, my God. Oh, my God, God gifted you with creative talent inside you. Somebody need them gifts and talents inside you. And God is trying to develop that stuff in the inside of you, my God. Somebody give God a hand, church. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mm. God trying to develop you. God trying to develop. Look at your neighbor and say, God trying to develop me. Oh my God. So you got to consider and you got to reflect. Consider what you're going through. Consider and then reflect. And say, okay, God, you just taught me something that passion the pastor. Uh, this stuff I'm going through is a purpose. I don't understand it, but I'm going to look at it from the attitude of victory, not victim. This stuff I'm going through, I'm going to look at it from an attitude of victory, not victim. I'm coming out on the winning side. I'm a mess on my way to progress, but I'm winning. Oh, everything connected to me wins. Speak that into the atmosphere. Everything connected to me wins. Every, somebody need to prophesy. Everything connected to me wins. If you don't lie, and everything connected to you wins. See, you don't believe that, but me and mine do. I can't get everything. Juju win, my grandkids win, my great 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 grandkids win, my daughter win, going off for Christ. If you properly connected, you win. Everything connected to me. If you properly connected to Christ and going off for Christ church, you win. I'm winning, she winning, so you win it. Somebody give God a hand. Hey, what? Y'all with me? Oh, we make a good time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh my God, your attitude would either hurt you or heal you. Your attitude. How you handle it, how you respond. It's not what happened to you, it's how you and I respond to what happened to you. See, because see, if Joseph could have responded in a negative way, but the Bible don't trace no word that he got, ever got bitter, he ever complained to God, and don't say none of that. And when he first started this series, my God, he was 17 years old when he got first thrown and sold into slavery. He was sold by his own flesh and blood. He's a young man. So he wasn't grown. He didn't have a whole lot of life on him. He was a young man, but he had a strong foundation. Foundation matters. Church don't give you foundation. Building your life up on your most holy faith, that's what gives you foundation. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom comes from the reverence. See, we don't reverence. Oh, that's a whole nother shit. We ain't lost our reverence in the church. See, I'm just one of those young pastors. 
but I'm an old school heart. I still, Sister Denise, I still believe in reverence. I still believe in respecting my elders. I still believe in yes, sir, no, sir. I still believe in giving a man a real shake and looking him in the face. I still believe in keeping my word and honoring my word. My God, come on, somebody. Oh, my God. That's reverence. I still believe in living holy, never committing adultery on my wife in 32 years. I still believe in that. I still believe that holiness still matters. I still believe in what the Constitution say. My God. Oh, I can't get nobody. I said, that's right, 32 of them, baby. That's all I know. Since I was 17, I'm 50 years old. I don't know no other woman. I don't remember the other ones before her. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's real in the field over here, baby. My mind been renovated. I don't remember nothing. <laughs> It's good in mind. I've been renovated. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Ooh, Jesus. Long time right there, 17. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me. I don't know how I ended up over there. Your attitude will either heal you or hurt you. Listen to me. Your attitude will either heal you or hurt you. So is it possible? Yes, it is. That you're hurting yourself because your attitude Attitude consists of outlook as well. Your outlook about the things you're going through. Joseph didn't let his outlook about the stuff he was going through cause end up hurting him. He didn't get bitter because if he got bitter, he wouldn't display the godly attitude. When you get bitter, it closes the heavens. When you get bitter, my God, you can't hear God's voice. When you get bitter, you start doing what you want to do. When you get bitter, you start moving off of flesh and not being led by the Spirit. When you get bitter, when you bitter, my God, you'll make a decision to abort the process. Because you say your season is up. But you're moving off of bitterness. As I told the church Wednesday, God don't never shift nobody on business. He ain't finna shift you from this church because you bitter or whatever and move you to another church. All you're doing is contaminating the body of Christ. God don't move like that. Oh my God, somebody give God a hand. I just needed to say that. I just need to say that because as I said, you can, hurt, you can help yourself or hurt yourself. When we make temporary decisions out for per I mean we make permanent decisions out for temporary stuff, we hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves. Outlast the storms. Pastor, you don't understand. I sure don't, but God do. And that's when you gotta fall over there. That's why you gotta be full of this word. <laughs> oh my God, Zechariah 4 6 says, not by my might. I don't care how strong I may be in the natural, it's not by my power, but it's by his spirit. That's why you got to be able to draw strength from the spirit. That's why you got to be full of the word of God. That's why we teach y'all, my God, to go through classes, read your book, get in the one you're reading because that's foundational stuff. So when the storms come, when the enemy attack, my God, what comes out in your attitude is Bible, not flesh, not bitterness, not anger. Come on, somebody. That's why you got to have the word down in the side of you. When you squeeze, when God allow life to squeeze you, what comes out, my God? When situations don't go your way, what comes out, my God? If everything come out, it's cussing the MF this and this that. Oh, my God, you know you ain't got enough word in you baby because the first thing should come out is my God Lord help me Lord I don't understand but help me I hit my finger ah, but you got enough strength to not cuss I can't get nobody to say nothing right there oh my God power comes from within baby power comes from within you got to tap into the resource the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is within some of the things you're going through you got to draw it from the inside Quit looking for people to sustain you and look on the inside of what's inside you. That's purpose and potential. You got something on the inside of you. And God's allowing situations to happen because he's trying to get you to go inward instead of external. You got all you need. Everything that God created you to do is on the inside of you. And that what ain't on the inside of you, he's going to send somebody to help you. God ain't going to ask you now to do nothing that don't qualify us to do it. And again, that what you don't have on the inside of you, he going to have people that's connected to help you. And it's coming your way. That's why you got to stay in position. That's why you got to keep a yes down in your soul. That's why you got to continue to strive after holiness and sanctification, my God. Because God trying to get people to you to help execute your will for your life. Go to point number two. Maintain attractive. Let's maintain this. Lord have mercy. I didn't know I was going to get stuck on one. Let's maintain attractive attitude. This is my last point. Watch your attitude. You got to develop, and then you got to maintain. So, my God, God give you a platform. Can you keep the platform? God give you a husband. Can you keep him? I don't mean to hurt nobody. God give you a nice car, but you don't take care of it. When the last time you changed oil on your car? Now your motor ticket. You didn't take care of it. Anything left unattended turns to chaos. See, you got to maintain. The Bible says God giving and God taking away. 
in a kingdom, see, a lot of y'all don't understand this. My God, thank God that I was privileged to understand it. But in a kingdom, the king owns everything. Everything inside of a kingdom is subject to the king. And so the king has the power to allow you to do business in his kingdom. And the king also has power to kick you out of his kingdom. Don't you know God don't have to let you do nothing inside of his kingdom? Don't you know God can shut you and I down today? And we'll find somewhere up in there St. Francis, Hillcrest. God can, don't get full of yourself and think that God needs you. See, you got to be able to maintain. That means you got to be found faithful. He gave one, one five talents, one two talents, one one talent. My God, you got to be willing to produce what God gave you. You got to increase. You got to increase. Your attitude should still be nasty. I'll, I'll give you that when you first get into Christ, but sooner or later, my God, your attitude should be developing. Everything that used to set you off shouldn't set you off. Everything that used to offend you and cause you to quit on God shouldn't be doing that. Every time you go through a trial, when you squeeze, you should be complaining all the way. Come on. By now, you should be past the victim mentality, my God. You should be developing, my God, in your faith. You should be maturing and growing, my God. You know how you mature and grow? You mature and grow in your mind. If your mind not developing, your life ain't going to develop. Many of us, my God, who is dwarfed. We're grown men, but we're dwarfed in the spirit. 65 years old, she act like we're 12. Grandkids and great grandkids that still function like we are victim. Passing that stuff down to our seeds. Each generation should be raising up another kingdom generation. Mm. Daniel, the scripture tells us of a boy who, who he was trained. Talking about maintaining. We're going to talk about Daniel right quick. Uh, the scripture tells us as a boy he was trained to honor God through worship and prayer. Trained as a boy to honor God through two things. Pillars, worship and prayer. There was pillars. Safe haven need to be birthed on worship and prayer. Period. Oh my God. Oh my God. Worship and prayer is pillars. Foundational stuff. That when the enemy attack, you go into worship. When the enemy attack, you go into prayer. If you know the story, my God, Daniel went up there and prayed like he was accustomed to do. He didn't have to pray because of the storm. It was his custom to pray. He prayed three times a day, every day. So whenever something happened, he just did what he normally do. Pray. And when you got a good prayer life, you have a good worship life. So last Sunday, my God, the enemy tried to attack, and so I came in here and I worshiped God. I was in warfare this past Wednesday. Oh, my God, sometimes you got to understand, you know, when you're in warfare, when the enemy is struck, when the enemy is busy, my God, you got to torment the devil through worship. One of the quickest ways to stomp the devil's head and get back at the devil is not a nasty, burnt attitude, but come down here and give God some glory in the midst of what you're going through. If you worship God, I'm not talking about clapping, doing that little flesh and stuff. I'm talking about warfare and worship. When you are, oh my God, oh, the enemy trying to snatch you, you, like, you got to take mine back. You can't have what belongs to me. Oh, my God, you got to learn how to turn around on an enemy. And when the enemy has attacked you, you got to attack him back to worship. The Bible says our warfare is not carnal. We don't use carnal weapons. Prayer and worship is a weapon spiritually. That's how you defeat the enemy in your mind. When your attitude gets nasty, stop and pray. When my God, when you feeling agitated and heavy and, and, and all that stuff, worship, put on some worship. Get out of that little way. Get out of all of those stuff. Attitude affects emotions. Attitude affects emotions. Attitude affects emotions. Are you with me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was captured. Talking about Daniel. Then he was captured by the enemy. Taken to a foreign country and exposed to things that was against, watch this, his training. However, he was determined. Determined means purposed in his mind. She ain't got to have your mind made up if you're going to outlast the storms. If you're going to develop an attitude, my God, that's attractive and maintain that attitude, you got a purpose in your mind that I'm not going to be the nasty person I used to be. I'm going to learn how to forgive. I'm going to learn how to love. I'm going to show somebody something else other than what I've been showing them. I'm not going to walk around like I've been eating on onions, as they say. Are you with me so far? Daniel was a young teenager, my God, because he was trained to honor God through worship and prayer. When he was taking hostage and things began to, to go haywire, he stood on foundation. He stood on principles. Keep in mind, he was a young man. He wasn't old. He was a teenager. Are y'all with me? He purposes his mind. Let me help you. Let me teach you. Some of y'all need to write this down, my God. See, you got to have your mind made up what you're not going to do. Because when the time comes, if you try to make it up then, you're going to do it. You got to have some ooh, principles about yourself. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You got to have some principles about yourself. You got to operate off your core. There's just certain things I will not do. So when the temptation comes, your mind is already made up. 
You don't have to even rationalize with it. You don't even have to think about it because it's just what you do. Yeah. See, I'm trying to say that's like my God purpose in your mind that you're going to honor God with your 10%. Yeah. When you get paid, no matter what, if you quit, be, uh, eat, quit letting the canker ones eat up to 90%, you'll have money to give God this 10%. Yeah. If you be a good disciplined steward, my God, stewardship with your 90%, you'll have money to take care and honor God with your 10%. You just got a purpose in your mind that you're going to make your mind up, that you ain't going to continue to live the way you live. You're going to make your mind up that you're going to be the mama you need to be, the daddy you need to be, the husband you need to be. You got the purpose in your mind. So when the enemy, uh, when the world, our uh, life come up against certain things, your mind is made up. So when Daniel was tempted, when Daniel, my God, was tempted in his relationship with God, because he had already had his mind made up, it was easy for him. He said, okay, y'all going to do this? I'm going to go up to my room and I'm going to pray. Yeah. He had already had his mind made up. See, some of y'all, y'all wait till y'all get in the storm, then you want to try to commit to God. You got to be, a commitment is a way of life when you're in the kingdom. You can't wait till you're going through stuff and all of a sudden now you want to go hard for Christ. I told myself, my God, when I got to prison, ain't no shadow turning. I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like. See, I purposed that in my mind way back in 1987 in that 6 by 9 prison cell. I told myself that I'm going on to Wanya to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like. And I've been through all kinds of trials and tribulations. And God reminds me, baby Cody, you told me that you was going on. You told me that you was ten toes in the game. You told me that you loved me. You told me it ain't no shadow of tournament. The Spirit of God reminds me what I told God. See, some of y'all make vows that you ain't ready to keep, baby. I've been keeping mine. That's why God has said, mm. That's why he has kept me because I've kept my vows. I had many opportunities to go back, but I didn't. Many of y'all tell me, I thank God for the yes. It's because I purpose in my mind, chill, that I wasn't going back. 76 people in discipleship, that's because I purpose in my mind that I wasn't going back. Oh my God, somebody appreciate that right there. Give God a hand. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going on whether you appreciate it or not. Somebody give God a hand. I have to use that to encourage you. You got the purpose in your mind. Don't wait till you get in. If you're single, don't wait. Say, I'll be a better, I'll be a good wife when I get married. No, be a wife now. Go home, clean your house up, cook dinner every night, run some bath water like he was done. Oh, but y'all better, even if you don't. I'm running this bath water, put his sandals out, put his shoes out, uh, put his, buy a newspaper every day, put it by his favorite church. Purpose in your mind. So guess what? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm moving. So if you begin to function like that, I know it may look crazy, but you, but you got to be crazy in order to do God's will. Come on, somebody. You got to be crazy if you're going to make it in this day and time. So when your husband do come, it's easy for you because you've already been doing it. Some of y'all may get a newspaper. What's a bad boy? You done lost it. Man, I can see some of y'all now. See, see, <laughs> baby, here they go. I've been doing this all by myself. I sure don't need no, man, you better ask somebody. I know some of y'all strong real women. Some of y'all, my God, women that's real strong, it's good to be strong, but it's also good to be humble. And so you start doing stuff that you know your husband gonna want you to do. You start doing it now. Talk to yourself in your house. Do stuff that you know your husband gonna want you to do. My God, learn how to humble yourself before he get there. Yeah, run some bath water. Get up and go get a newspaper. Even though you don't read it, get it every day. Let them be piled to the ceiling. My God, that's okay. Oh, my God, I'm teaching y'all young or I used to do something over here now. I'm teaching y'all something. We talking about maintaining a good attitude. Maintaining. That means you got a purpose in your mind to do some stuff. Oh, my God, I told myself I wasn't going to be no hypocrite. Yeah, purpose in my mind, I wasn't going to be no hypocrite. Yeah, 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 because the fear, the fear is the beginning of wisdom. See, we done lost our reverence. That's why we do stuff. When you don't longer reverence God, not fear like a ghost, but respect and honor. So when temptation come, it's an easy man. It's an easy decision for me. I ain't got to wrestle. Nobody's above temptation, but I ain't got to wrestle. When they start jabbing at me, when they trying to get at me, I don't have to, because I purpose in my mind that I can't do her like that. I made that up a long time ago. But because I honor and respect the Constitution, because I love God, see what I'm trying to say? That's why I don't do it. Not because of, I love God, see what I'm trying to say? If you love God, there's just some things you won't do. Do anybody love God? 
I know some of you can't clap because you already messed up, but it's okay. You still need to love God because I'm going to pick up where I left up there. I started the day. I'm going to love God today, and I won't make that mistake the next day. Yeah, I have to be transparent because I got to help you. I got to help you. I got to help you. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. He purposed in his mind to hold on to what he believed. He, oh, my God. He, uh, he purposed in his mind to hold on to what he believed. He experienced terrible events from the moment he was captured until the moment he was honored, y'all. He maintained an excellent spirit. He maintained Daniel from the moment he was captured ooh, to the moment he went higher. He maintained an excellent spirit. That means he maintained an excellent attitude. Even when he was captured, he had a good attitude. On his way to being honored, he had a good attitude. Joseph, from the time he was captured, sold into the pit, sold into captivity, thrown into prison, he maintained an excellent attitude. These were two young men. They weren't grown people with a lot of life. They were young soldiers that purpose in their mind that they love God. You got to make your mind up. When you love God, you don't make no excuses. When it get cold outside, you still get up and come to church. Mm-hmm. He, ma he maintained attractive attitude. A, a positive attitude, watch this. A positive attitude never focuses on the problem. Write that down. Come on, y'all stay with me, church. I know God been speaking. Stay with me. A positive attitude never just focuses on the problem. A person with a positive attitude, they got some substance in them, they focus on the solution. Real leaders focus on the solution more than the problem. You can always tell a follower from a leader. Because followers focus on problems, leaders focus on solutions. They give y'all some substance up in here, man. If you find yourself, my God, tell your husband, tell your wife, quit focusing on the problem, focus on the solution. And then as my wife will say, then you need to listen to the solution. I didn't give you the solution. I do what I told you to do. I'm just keeping it on the dollar. See, because see, I just liberated some of y'all, my God, because you think she can't tell you now, you think he can't tell you nothing. Quit disqualifying your man because he's been through some things. Quit disqualifying him and think that his voice don't matter because he, he made some mistakes along the way. Don't do that. In that case, if you can't, if you can't respect him, then you need to make some decisions. Because all you're going to do is welcome to a hellish life. Don't push him out to another woman. So, but if you love God, no matter how much I do to you, you ain't going to go out to another woman. See, I ain't going to give you no escape goat, man. Yes, Lord. Mm. So remember, you got to focus on the solution, not the problem. Your attitude reveals the real you. Your attitude reveals the real you. Let me move. Your attitude is much deeper than just a few thoughts you may think, y'all. It's much deeper than that. It's your core. It's who you are, man. It's who you are. The things that you constantly keep doing, that you keep telling yourself, Lord, forgive me. God, know my heart. I know I'm not perfect. You just keep making the same old mistakes. It's the core of you. That stuff, my God, that you know, my God, is going to cause so much damage. It's your core. Lord, help me. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. So it ain't just about a few thoughts that you think. Mm. As I said, your attitude comes out of the core of your being. Attitude represents your disposition, y'all, your outlook, and your character. Mm, mm, mm. The biggest limitation is self-imposed. A lot of us cannot maximize and become the people that God predestined us to become because we got too many self-imposed limitations. The devil ain't got to bother you. He just got to allow one door to close and now you think you're disqualified. He got to allow you to be denied one time and now you say, I ain't good enough. He got to allow somebody, my God, not to affirm you one time and now you feel less than. And then you begin, uh, you, you try to birth the business and it didn't happen. And so now you don't have no tenacity, no passion to restart again. You done lost the zest of life off of one mistake. And sometimes, my God, God got to see how bad you want it. So I ain't going to let you prosper this time. I'm going to close the door and I'm going to close it four times. Ask Abraham Leakin. Everything going to happen as soon as you want it. Some doors ain't going to open because you prayed and fasted 40 days. God will keep it closed because he said you don't want it yet. You, got, you want it for the wrong reasons. You can't just want something for the abundance. 
The company thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me go up. The company you're trying to birth, the things God called you to do, you can't just want to be rich. You need to find, find out God's kingdom purpose for the business you're trying to birth. And that's when God said, okay, now she's ready. Now he's ready because, see, he wants that business to be used for my kingdom. Not for them to get a new S500, a bigger house. Because, see, God knows if he gives you that business and he begin to bless you financially, you're going to worship it instead of worshiping the God that gave it to you. So you ain't ready. Attitude disqualifies you. You know what I'm trying to say? If you're starting a business because you want more money, then you're starting for the wrong reason. You'll be saying, God, help me find a purpose of wanting to birth this business that you dropped in my spirit so I can get about your business. God only blesses what he calls for. He, don't bless, he blesses what he calls for. What God calls for, he provides for. Mm, that's the wrong attitude. So why stuff ain't took it off for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Daniel said in Daniel chapter 3, Daniel, because of an extraordinary spirit. I'm closing. Because of an extraordinary spirit within him. This is within, y'all. Began to distinguish himself among the, amongst the commissioners and the satraps. And the king planned to appoint him over the entire realm. Because of his exceptional attitude, he separated himself from the pack. Attitude will separate you from the pack. Attitude will make my God, ooh, my God, a person with a sweet attitude. I, I'm usually, everybody up front, but that attitude back there, that's the one, ooh, Lord, she just got a, he just got a, man, look at, every time you see him, it's just so pleasant. Hey, pastor, hi, first lady, just pleasant. Everybody shifting, everybody moving, everybody complaining, everybody feeling. He's just steady. He's just steady. So that's attractive attitude. Dan, Dan, you so distinguished himself. Now I looked up this word. Thank you, great John Bevere. Listen to this. Extraordinary spirit means to, to go beyond the norm, to break out of the status quo, to exceed the common measure. Watch this. If you got an extraordinary spirit living a normal life, will manifest the opposite of lifestyle, mm, of that of one possessing extraordinary spirit. So if I got extraordinary spirit and to live a normal life, uh, I'm mocking myself. When you got extraordinary spirit, my God, you can't live a normal life. Your spirit alone, meaning your attitude, your core, the very nature of you as a person, my God, will set you apart. From the pack. He has separated the sheep from the goat, wheat from tare. Your attitude has, a, has the power to separate you. People can notice you. You can be the quietest one in the room. They say, She got a good attitude. He got a good attitude. Attitude is powerful. Joseph watched this attitude. Daniel watched this attitude in the midst of what they was going through. You and I have to ask God to forgive us because there have been some doors and there has been some people that we have pushed out of our life because of our nasty attitudes. There's been doors that God cannot open, my God, because our attitude is not ready to possess it. Attitude is disqualifying us. Attitude. If Joseph and Daniel would have had a negative attitude, they would have never obtained what God had for them. Your attitude would keep you from obtaining what God has for you. Your attitude would hinder you from receiving what God has for you. You don't get to stay bitter. You don't get to stay angry. If you are angry, deal with it. If you are bitter, say, God, help me. When you say that, God going to put you in a situation where you can begin to get help. So that person that you mad at may be the very person, my God, that God said, okay, I'm going to help you. I'm going to put you right there in front of her. Now what you going to do? I said before you life and death, you better choose life. Because you might not get another opportunity. Good teacher. Your attitude determines success and failure. Your attitude determines success and failure. I was thinking about what Lenny was teaching this morning in class. And I thought, thought I began to think about that's so why I was so quiet. I thought about the person I used to be and all the self-limitations and all the low self-esteem. Y'all don't think it, but I had it. I got so sick with my self-esteem, self-confidence, all that was messed all up because of my condition. I looked external. But when God began to show me who I was internal after I got saved, God began to build my self-esteem up. See, you need to have some losses and you need to have some wins. Wins build confidence. When you see God turn around things, it should build momentum and confidence in your spirit. When you fail and you get back up and, and then you conquer, that should build momentum in your spirit. That's an attitude. It's a mindset. And so I began to think about the person. I said, my God, I looked at all these people. And Pastor Sham said, you got 70-some people in class. My God, and I looked at all the people. I said, my God, ooh, Lord, it was a time, my God, y'all only knew the level of shame that I, walked, I once walked in. The level of guilt and shame. 
that I once walked in every single day because I was so sick and I was so ashamed of myself. And the things that I did, Marco, selling my clothes and stuff for drugs, living in abandoned houses. Oh my God, if I can rise above that, if I can conquer that through Christ, if I can become who God has made me, that's why I share who I am with you because I want to show you that if I can, you can. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's an attitude. It's an attitude. And I had a lot of shame. I had a lot of guilt because I had become somebody that I know I wasn't trained to become. But when I look back over it, what the enemy meant for bad, watch this. He didn't mean it for bad because the devil didn't make me do nothing. This is another reason why I was able to recover. Watch this, Didi. I was able to recover because when God saved me, when I was in prison the second time, I didn't go into the prison mad and angry and bitter. I realized, LaWanya, y'all, that my own choices. My wife would tell you I didn't have to do none of the stuff I did, Trey. I did it because I chose to do it. Didn't nobody make me do nothing. And so because I understood that personal revelation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brandon, personal revelation, I was the reason why I was sitting in prison. I was the reason why I was facing 35 years to life. I was the reason. My own choice and decision. Nobody made me do nothing. And because I understood that, my God, I was able to recover because I didn't have no bitterness and anger towards nobody. As long as you keep, my God, your bitterness and anger towards somebody, you have a victim mentality, always blaming people, you'll never be able to recover. You'll never be able to recover. Because you're going to always see the situation you're in is somebody else caused it. I caused it myself by my own choices. And so because I caused it, and I had the choice to, to make the decision, I had the choice to make the decision to get healthy. I was thinking about all that in class. I had to go through a complete metamorphosis. I had to go through a complete renovation. And it just didn't start in prison. It, it started in prison, but it's continually repetition. Reading every day, flipping the pages, purposing in my mind, striving. Don't want to go back. Don't want to let my wife down. Don't want to be a failure to my kids. You got to have a cause to live for, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming to church is not enough, baby. <laughs> you got to have something other than that, man. got to push you. You got to make some personal vows. You got a purpose in your attitude, in your mind, that there's certain things you're just not going to do, man. And so I thought about that. Some of us, we can't conquer because our self-esteem is too low. You're disqualifying yourself. You're basing everything about your future from your past. Many of us has brought our past into our present. That's why we can't get past our past. Yeah, that's true. Your past is blocking you from obtaining and possessing your future. You have taken your past that should be in the back of you and brought it to your present. And the people are oh, moving. Let me close. And the people, here's, a, here's another life lesson. There's people in your life that the enemy it's called divine strategy that the enemy have, people that's connected to you that is placed there not by God, but by the enemy. And they keep reminding you of what you cannot do, who you used to be, what your mama said, what your daddy said, keep telling you what your ex-husband did or your ex-baby mamas did. Them as assigned agents, assigned agents of the devil to keep you in a place of unproductive, inability to produce, barren in the spirit, unfruitful with your knowledge of God. You better evaluate the people that you got, and the people that you talk to on a consistent basis and listen to the things they say. Are they encouraging? Are they adding? Are they robbing you? Mm. Watch your attitude. The events of Joseph's life during his in-between was unfair and difficult. Life is unfair, y'all. Life is difficult. Life is not a bed of roses. But Joseph chose to approach each circumstances, the pit, the prison, as well as the palace, with an attractive attitude. He didn't let his slavery affect his outlook. He was a slave, but he thought like a king. Yeah. 
Joseph knew what God said. God gave Joseph the dreams. So no matter what he was going through, he was able to maintain a kingdom mind, kingdom focus. Joseph was able to get through everything he went through because he kept in mind It's destiny. We tend to focus more on the problem and forget about the assignment. Then we get discouraged and we never reach our destiny. Another a trick of the enemy is to get you and I focusing on problems, people, leaders, pastors, who doing what, who ain't doing this and that. All that is a, a distraction of the enemy to keep you from focusing on that right there. You got to see past the mountains. Come on. Come on. Come on, Jeremiah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Marco. Just line up. We close with this. I had a dream that my 12 brothers Give me 12 men. Come down there quickly. Alvin, all y'all men. Come on, come on. Come on, baby. Go, come on. 12 men. Just land up right here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is speaking. 12 men. 12 men. Count me out. One, two, three. How many we got? Is that 12? One, two, three, four, five, nine, nine. Turn around. Look at me, y'all. Is that 12? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Come on. Let me bring some context to this closing. Y'all turn right here. Look at me, Pastor. All y'all. Remember my destiny. See how little that is? You barely can see that. Do I need one more man? Come on, Keith, come on. God gave me a dream. God gave you dreams. God showed y'all something. God spoke to y'all. God woke you up in the midnight hour. God has sucked people in your life to confirm the things he's spoken to you when you was young. Each one of these represents a mountain. Each one of these represents a mountain. You had a dream that you would be here. Y'all 12 shift. Come down here, Keith. Lead him, Durant. Lead him. Right here. Right there. Hold that. Don't drink it. Just hold it. <laughs> God gave Joseph. I want to bring some context. I'm serious. Time is at hand. I'm done. God gave. Because this is parallel to you. Some of y'all catch the vision. You had a dream over her. These are your mountains. These are your 11 other brothers that God said will bow down to you. And because God said that they will bow, they didn't like me. When all I was doing was sharing with them, because them was my siblings, what God showed me. What God revealed to me in private, I announced it in public. And now I'm criticized. Catch the revelation from what God showed me. But God didn't show me that I was going to have to bob and weave through all these mountains, through all these trials, through all these pit stops, accused of rape. I made mistakes along the way. I stumbled and fell. Some may have committed adultery. Some may be in fornication. Some may be lying. Some may be in unforgiveness. Some may be, be bitter. Some may be trapped in porn. Some may have an online relationship with four or five men. You may have a false Facebook page, but it's somebody that you're not. These are all the type of stuff that we deal with. But guess what? The destiny is still right there. And these 12 men, which is my brothers, what's going to do? Now y'all got to bow. Get on one knee. This is what God was showing Joseph right here. 
And every last one of my brothers, because guess what? Those 12 was where the nation come from. God took the 12 into captivity. They went in at 12, but they came out 70 and ended up millions. See what I'm trying to say? But see, they was going to do just what they're doing. Mountains, my brothers, and they all bow and look where I'm standing. And so they thought that Joseph was going to kill them. And Joseph said in his word, with you meant for evil. God meant it for my good. So I love y'all. I'm not going to kill y'all. I'm going to make sure y'all get food because God was using Joseph to preserve the nation. Joseph was going to use Joseph to preserve the nation. The nation come through 12. They went in 12, but they came out millions. Strategic planning of God. God know what he's doing with your future. God know what he's doing with your life. All your mountains, don't let that stop you from fulfilling your purpose. Come on, let's give God a hand. Thank you, men of God. Thank you, men of God. <laughs> mm. Thank you, men of God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My conclusion, thank you for the time. Life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% of how we respond. Your attitude will always become your actions, church, and your reactions. The great Lou Holtz, there used to be Notre Dame, fighting hours of Notre Dame's football coach, once said, ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. And attitude determines how well you do it. God did fulfill that in Joseph, what he showed him. His 12 brothers did bow down, including his father and his mother. And those mountains, we all got to go through them. There's certain things that I, as a pastor and my wife, cannot protect you from. There's certain things, church, that you have to go through in life on your way to where God is taking you. There is a certain level of pain. There's a certain level of discomfort. There's a certain level of things being unfair. But everything's working together for your good if you stay in God's will. And don't allow yourself to get bitter, but get better. I wonder how many doors has been closed. How many opportunities have been lost because we did not purpose in our mind that no matter what comes my way, I shall not be defeated. I will not back up on God. I will not mm, cheat on God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah and Jeremiah that they prostituted themselves with idols. What's in your life? What's blocking you? What's hindering you? What's stopping you from reaching your purpose and your potential? Attitude. It's a bad boy. Just like being offended and choosing to stay offended is a bad girl. Your choice. What you choose to do with the revelation that God has just imported into your spirit, that's up to you. I just choose to be free. Because you can't have joy, which is internal, and peace, which is subject to external circumstances, if you got a nasty attitude. A lot of our unhappiness and uneasiness and frustration got to do with our attitude which is your mindset. With every head bowed, if you're here this morning or this afternoon and you don't know Christ, let's get through this. If you don't know Christ and you are ready to give your life to Christ to start your new mm, journey in life, you have never accepted Christ. I want to know this God that you're talking about. I want to know this joy and peace that you're talking about. I'm one of those that got that bad attitude and I need some help. And I just want to give my life to Christ. I want to have an opportunity to live for Christ and, I, and operate like a queen and operate like a king. Is that you? If that's you, raise your hand. Is that anybody that want to give their life to Christ? Today is your day. Anybody. You're ready to make Jesus Christ Lord, capital L-O-R-D. You are willing to renounce your old way of doing stuff, 
your old mindset, and you want to know for sure that you have an opportunity to stand before Christ and her job, well done, my good and faithful servant. you just ready to submit. Is that you? Come. If that's you, come. If you're here this morning or this afternoon and you're not properly in alignment, your attitude has disqualified you, you're bitter, and you're just ready to get, you want to release. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You want to release. You want to release. You want to release. There's some people that you're holding on to that frustrate you. There's circumstances and situations that you're not happy about. There's things that have happened to you that got you real, real at ease, at odds. Mm. There's some things you just need to release. There's some friends that you may have lost because of your attitude. There's doors that you feel, my God, closed because you mishandled yourself in the interview. There's some people, my God, that mishandled you. If that's you, why don't you just come? You know where you're at, my God. Don't be ashamed. We all need an attitude adjustment. We all have stuff in our life that we need God to improve on. We need God's help. If you can do it, you would have been and done it. Come. And I don't want nobody to take this wrong, but I'm looking at those that chose not to come. I'm paying attention to your attitude. I'm going to make sure I watch your attitude as your pastor. And I'm going to remind you that you had an opportunity to get it right, but you chose to get it wrong. Now look at your attitude. Oh, yeah, because I love you. And I want to empower you and I want to strengthen you. So I have to pastor you. And that means if I have to call some out, I will. Not to hurt you, but to help you. So I'm going to be paying attention. And I'm not trying to convict nobody. If the Spirit of God don't lose you, use you to come, then don't come. But if you know your attitude is out of order, my God, you're on the other side of stuff, you're bitter about stuff, then you should be at the altar. If it's just stuff called life that has made you mad, you may just be mad at life because things has happened, my God, and you don't understand. Then you ought to come and say, God, help me understand this thing so I can get better and not bitter. Yeah, come, come. Thank you, Lord. Woo, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Lord. Break every chain, break every yoke. Bad relationships. Some of us is, has a bad attitude because we, we ended on a bad note with someone and we just can't seem to get past it. Every time we think about him or her, ah, uh, we get angry. Then that should be at the altar. Woo, Jesus, my God. A job that you thought you should have got but you didn't get. And if someone got you feeling some kind of way. Something somebody may have said that you didn't like. I'm just trying to allow the Spirit of God to speak to any area that may be holding you captive. Remember, some of us are disqualifying ourselves because we won't respond to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you now, Lord. We're learning how to watch our attitude, Lord. Mm. Forgive us, Father God, for the negative attitudes. Forgive us, Father God, for complaining. Forgive us, Father God, for grumbling. Forgive us, Father God, for squandering our opportunities, Father God, with people that you brought into our circle for us to impact and empower. But instead of us blessing them, we bleed off on them, Father God. Instead of us ooh, helping them become, we contaminated them, Father God. Because of our nasty attitude, Lord, we repent and ask that you forgive us. Father God, give us a plan of action on how to conquer this bad attitude, how to conquer this stuff that got us uneasy.